Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back with another Twitter thread! Today we're talking about side decks. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of side decking, the side deck is where you put cards that you can board into your main deck after the first game. Once you know what your opponent's on and what strategy they are aiming for, you can grab from your side deck cards specifically targeted at their strategy and play them in your main. This gives you a huge advantage in games two and three, but because Yu-Gi-Oh is such an unbelievable game with so many different strategies, it's also where the jank lives. And as a result, cards that are super narrow in application do very specific things or altogether very stupid usually end up in the side deck. A great example of this is Mushroom Man number two, which is currently playable for the first time ever because Mushroom Man number two during the end phase switches control to your opponent and during the standby burns its controller for 300. This is especially relevant in the Cash Tira mirror in which you need an empty board to summon any Cash Tiras and taking self burn triggers the effect of an on-field Cash Tira unicorn. It is a devastating option in the mirror and also very funny. Uh, yes, Ultima here with uh, the Necroz format card, and we are going to talk about this format exactly one time. This specific format was responsible for a lot of the jankiest jank that's ever existed in side decks. Shock Troops of the Ice Barrier, a great example. Uh, Reinforcement of the Army for Exiled Force or DD Warrior Lady, playable in 2015. Bull Blader, a lot of cards specifically designed to beat exactly a card that has been made with gin. You had to out the gin lock somehow, folks. During Halcross format, dinosaur side. Oh, up, 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 up. I'm gonna stop you there, Skyhawk. Did dinosaur side this? Or did you side this? I adore that set rotation wars from the OCG spiral format. If you give your opponent an Oracle of Zephra, they can't flip it up unless you search because the search is mandatory. So you run a Zephra card, and then in response, they board into Gateway of Chaos. So then you run a Gaia card to search that and have to predict which one they're going to board into after the side. Pax has cited Witch's Strike. It was the goo because there was only one negate in Dragon Link format, so you nuked their board after. This is a classic Pack card. Pack has tried to play Witch's Strike like 12 times. I think it's the reason that it was ever expensive. Back when Shadow first became meta, sending the fusions to the grave was not a good idea due to their recursion. Defusion still pops up from time to time solely because it spins the fusion back instead of putting it into the grave, though there's better options now. End of Anubis! The end of Anubis has been randomly showing up in side decks again after decades. While this card is face up on the field, all effects of spell trap and monster cards that target a card in the graveyard or that activate in the graveyard are negated. The Infinite Shay says, I credit Ava Lee's for this because she was the first I saw do it, but the end of Anubis sided in Labyrinth specifically for the tier limit matchup because it can be summoned by Labyrinth Labyrinth after resolving Ghastly Glitch. Sided against Strikers way back when because Guru had a terrible matchup and it bought me some time. Ugh. I always heard this being sided against Striker. It just seems terrible. Like, wouldn't they just summon another Striker? <laughs> this is a bit of an old one, but back in 2016 Blue Eyes format, there was a lot of cards you could search off Sage with Eyes of Blue. If you're unfamiliar with that card, it adds a light tuner from your deck to your hand. This is one of the cards that was a dubious creature you could use alongside Melody of Awakening Dragon to pop a Floodgate. Oh, that one striker list playing Magical Spring and Offerings to specifically counter Adventure Prank will never not be funny to me. That was a one event type of tech, but draw a number of cards equal to the number of face-up spell trap cards that your opponent controls. At that point, uh, Fateful Adventure plus Draco back plus like whatever spell they were currently activating. Then discard a number of cards equal to the number of face-up spell trap cards you control. Until the end of your opponent's next turn after this card resolves, spell trap cards your opponent controls cannot be destroyed, and their activation and effects cannot be negated. Oh yeah, plus field spell, plus pranks. Just draw five. This card's been playable a number of times. Royal Command says flip monsters' effects cannot be activated and their effects are negated. Um, it's funny because it does not just say their flip effects. So this negates, oh, I don't know, the graveyard effects of the Shadows, for instance. One of the worst cards ever printed. Um, target a face of monster your opponent controls that has Xyz material. Detach all Xyz material from it. And if you do, return it to the extra deck. Then, if there is a monster card in the graveyard among those detached Xyz materials, special summon as many of them as possible from the graveyard to your opponent's side of the field in face-up defense position. Their levels are reduced by one. Cards and effects cannot be activated in response. This was mission critical in Rongo Nimiad format. 
another one of the Canary in the Coal Mine cards. If this is playable, something's gone terribly wrong in your format. People cited this for tier 0 Gumblar loops in Goki. It worked when you drew it, but neutralizing one of two Gumblar activations against a U-Link board with disruption is in Master Rule 4 should not have been the main concern. Yeah, this was a classic. Uh, Gizmek Uka, the Festive Fox of Fecundity. If your opponent special summons a monster, inflict 300 damage to them. If a monster is special summoned from the main deck, you can special summon this card from your hand, and if it's specialed, you can target a face up monster your opponent controls, special a monster from your hand or deck whose attack equals its own defense with the same attribute. So what you would do is wait for your opponent to summon exactly Halka Fibrax, summon Festive Fox, target the Halk, and summon Barrier Statue of the Torrent, locking them into waters. This was awful. Some people started playing Flower Cardian Board Fly in Tri Brigade because it's technically generic. This card just FTKs tier. Uh, yes. That means you are officially the most powerful Flower Cardian monster. Congratulations. Yippee! Oh, God. Full House has been playable a lot of times, but most notably, it was side decked at the 2016 NAWCQ against Cleefort because they would always have Monolith Scout. And then all you needed were three back row, and you can bet your bottom dollar that they were playing them. Burner's Falcon. While I don't remember seeing anyone actually go through with it, people were spitballing running it in Dragon Ruler so the deck could Shockmaster Spellbox. No need. Just no need whatsoever. Back in Plush Fire Pen Magician formats, I was playing Infernoid. Game 1, I would use Reasoning or Monster Gate for Christia, which is level 8. But then Game 2, I'd side in Mechanical Hound. It was seven, and the Infernoid could make you hellbent easily. <laughs> that's, that, that's, wait, that's kind of, wait, hold up, that's kind of gnarly. Yep. Played this card at the Vegas 3v3 against Spiral to activate Mystic Mine. When decks that consistently play field spells come into vogue once again, oh my god, pop-up is crazy. What's going on on pop-up also? It's like the Halloween maidens are trying to, you know, push the the Rose Maidens into hell. Return one spell trap card your opponent controls to the hand. This card's activation and effect cannot be negated. This card has been side decked a couple of times. This can bounce an active Imperial Order. During Goki hand loop format, I'd side in one Cyber Dragon, three Cyber Emergency, and one Cyber Eltanen. Cyber Dragon could be tributed over Ebly and fuse into Mega Fleet to clear one to two monsters, then beat over a third. Eltianen was in case they discarded Sydra. It was a five head mood. It was awful. Made top four at a regional citing this garbage. The sole reason was to out exactly Evil Swarm Ophion. <laughs> all I learned from this one is that you all are sideboarding some truly ass tier cards. I can only hope that someday we will see people citing Mushroom Man number three. You're a lifesaver. Oh yeah. <laughs>